Prisma Postgres is now generally available, which means you can go ahead and use it in your production applications. Today, let's take a look at how we would use Prisma Postgres in a Next.js application. We'll take a look at creating the database and then bringing it into the application and finally wiring everything together with some data. We're going to work on an application that's based on this guide that we've got in our guide section of our docs. Use Prisma ORM with Next.js, so you can follow along with this as well. You can find a deployment-ready example on GitHub as well, and that is actually what we've got sitting right here, Prisma Next.js is loaded up. We have got a schema, we've got a user model, a post model, and now we want to get a Prisma Postgres database put together to back this. So let's swap out SQLite here. We don't want SQLite, we want Postgres. And then we want, of course, env with database URL. That's going to be in our environment file. Why don't we create that environment file right now? We can do touch.env. And now let's save the schema and we'll head over to the Prisma data platform. So over here at console.prisma.io, this is where we would set up our Prisma Postgres database. So come over and click new project. Then you can give it a name. I'm just going to choose this suggested name here. We'll say we want to get started with Prisma Postgres. So that is selected. And then there are a few regions we can choose from. We have currently got US East, Europe, or Asia Pacific. I'll choose US East, that's closest to me, and then create project. Okay, so things are provisioning here. The database is getting wired up and getting set to go. So now we see connected, that's great. So really quick, we are able to get our database connected. And what we've got down here, if we scroll down a bit, is a database URL that is given to us. This is our connection to the Prisma Postgres database via Accelerate, specifically through an API key. All right, so let's copy this and let's come back over to the project. Then in the environment file, we can just paste that in and then close that down. So that's all set to go. Now, since we've got our model all set to go, we can actually just go ahead and do migrations at this point. And what that looks like is this, npx prisma migrate dev. Normally I just choose init for the name for the first migration. All right, so we're all set to go there. Let's check this seed file out. We've got seed.ts. And what we've got in here is some fake data that's going to be used in this application. And we can run the seed file to get this into the database. Let's do npx prisma db seed. Okay, the seed command has been executed, so we should have some data ready to go now. Why don't we take a look at Prisma Studio in the console to make sure. So back over here at the console, we have got Studio as an option over here on the left side. There we've got Prisma Studio loaded up, we've got a post model, we've got a user model, and we've got some data in each of those. Prisma Studio being right here in the console is very useful for you to be able to collaborate with your teams on your data. You can do it all in one place. You don't have to run Studio locally, but you can of course do that still if you want to as well. Okay, so we should be able to fire up the application at this point. Let's try that, npm run dev. And let's check it out over here. Okay, super blog is set to go. Okay, so this view here is listing the two users that we've got in our user table. And what we can do is take a look to see where that is coming through here. So it's in the main page, page.tsx. What we're doing here in this component is because it's a server component, we can just look for those users calling Prisma as if we're on the back end, because at this stage we are on the back end with Next.js. Of course, the story would be different if this was a client component. So if we were doing use client, this wouldn't be valid, but we are doing a server component here. So we're able to do any kind of querying that we want with Prisma ORM right here. Okay, let's check out another page we've got here in the application. We have got this post page. So if we go to posts, we see a little bit of data here. We've got some posts by Alice, one by Bob. And this is all here because we've got this post directory here in our app routers. So we've got posts, we've got the main page for posts where we are doing a query with Prisma clients. And that's again, because we're on a server component here. We also have this spot where we can do new posts. So if we take a look in here at this new post spot, this renders together a form, which we'll take a look at in just a second. And because we're using use server here, we're able to do that server action where we create the post with Prisma as well. So let's take a look for that. So post, and then we can go post slash new. And then this new post form here, of course, is just one where we can enter another post, another post body, create that post. Another post is showing. So we were able to create that data in our Prisma Postgres database. We can take a look for that actually. If we come over here and we refresh our post model and there is our fourth post, the one that just came through. Now, something we can do very easily because we're using Prisma Postgres is we can choose to use Prisma Accelerate. Prisma Postgres is served by Prisma Accelerate and Accelerate gives us some really cool things like connection pooling and caching as well. So let's see how we can wire that up really quickly. All we have to do is come in and install the extension, npm install at Prisma slash extension accelerate. 
Okay, we've got the extension installed. Over here in our lib directory, we have got prisma.ts, and this is a singleton that we can use across our Next.js application. What we wanna do here is extend the Prisma client instance to use Accelerate. So let's take a look at that. Let's import with Accelerate. So import with Accelerate, that comes from extension Accelerate. Now here, let's call for dollar extends. And that's really it. We can save that now. We can come over to our Prisma data platform. We can go to Accelerate here. So let's take a look here. We've got 20 total queries. In terms of caching though, we don't have anything listed for hitting the cache. Let's see if we can do some work to be able to enable our cache. So what we can do is we can come to one of our queries that we wanna cache. And maybe that will be the queries that come through where we list our posts. So here on our cache find many, let's do cache strategy and we'll list out a TTL of 60 and then also an SWR of 60. SWR is stale, well revalidate. And then our TTL here can just be 60 as well. And so let's do some refreshing over here in the application, see if we can get some of these results to be cached. Okay, back over in the Prisma console, let's refresh this page. Okay, cool, we've got some cache configured queries coming through now, and we can take a look down here at what we get in terms of latency. So if we're hitting the origin, it's average of 334 milliseconds, but if we hit the cache, 10.5 milliseconds. So a huge improvement, which if we add caching through Prisma Accelerate to our queries in that fashion, will improve the performance of our applications dramatically. All right, so that is how to set up a Prisma Postgres database and use it in a Next.js application. Again, it's very simple here in the Prisma data platform. We can choose to create a new project and click through the steps to get a Prisma Postgres database started. And really it's just a few clicks. The database gets spun up in a matter of seconds and then we're ready to go for our applications. If you've got any questions at all about Prisma Postgres, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at Prisma on Twitter. Thanks for watching.